Hey Elonites, welcome to the Tesla space where we share the latest news, rumors, and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. Tesla owners received a Christmas present from Elon this past December in the form of a software update for their vehicles. Firmware updates have been a staple of Tesla ownership from the very beginning, with the cars regularly receiving over-the-air downloads that would improve on various functions of the vehicle. It's usual for Tesla to release smaller patches on a regular basis, but typically they will do one full software version upgrade per year. For example, the Tesla software version 10 was released in September 2019 and brought a significant host of new features to the cars that we now consider to be staples of the Tesla experience, like Smart Summon, Spotify, Tesla Theater, and the Cuphead game. With 2020 coming to a conclusion, and with Elon adding hype by tweeting that a fire holiday update was coming, pretty much everybody expected that Tesla software version 11 would be dropping at Christmas, and that turned out to be not entirely true. We did get a very sick new update, but we are still on version 10 of the software. So we know that more is still to come, but when and what more is there to be released? We'll get into that a bit later, but for the moment, let's run through the new features that we did get for Christmas 2020. Back in November, Elon teased this software release by saying it would include so many things you want and some you didn't know you wanted. Typical Elon being mysterious and vague and of course, purposely driving speculation. So let's start there. Things you want. Beginning with improvements that Tesla owners have been wanting to see added to the cars. The first thing that you would probably notice is the improved graphic display on the center screen. When parked, there is a very crisp, realistic graphic of your Tesla on the screen facing towards the driver. The nice touch to this graphic is that it now reacts to the driver's real-world actions. If you open the door or roll down the window of your car, the same will happen to the virtual car on screen. Same with turning the wheel, opening the front or rear trunk, even the charge port. It's actually pretty neat. When you start driving the car, the display flips to the classic overhead view and everything here is just a little bit larger crisper, more realistic looking than earlier versions of the display. They've moved around the indicators for gear selection, regen, and battery capacity at the top of the screen to make everything a little easier to see, and bringing the speedometer reading into a slightly more predominant location. The Tesla T icon for vehicle information has been knocked off the top of the screen. Now that's under software in the menu system. And at the bottom of the screen, we have new buttons for rear view cameras and windshield wipers that are a bit easier to access than before and hopefully less distracting. Those new buttons push the climate control a little further to the right though. Scheduled departure has also been improved. This is a setting where you can tell the car what time you leave for work in the morning so that your Tesla could make sure that your car is properly charged in time for you to head out for the day. This new update adds climate control into the mix, so now your car will not only be freshly charged when you are ready to go, it will also be heated or cooled to your liking as well. In this function, you can also adjust that charging session to happen during off-peak hours on your electricity billing cycle so that charging the Tesla is as cost-effective as possible. There's been a nice change to the map display icons for superchargers. Now when you see superchargers in your area on the map, the icon will tell you how many stalls are currently available at each charger. We also get some new games available from the Tesla Arcade. You'll have the opportunity to kill some time playing Cat Quest, Polytopia, and the classic Solitaire. They've also now added the option for your passenger to play a game while you are driving. The implementation is running basically on the honor system. The screen just asks you whether or not you are driving the car. But moving on to things you didn't know you wanted. By far the craziest and most unexpected feature out of this Christmas 2020 software update is the boombox mode that has been added. This is for Tesla vehicles that are equipped with an external speaker, that's every vehicle made after September 2019, when they became standard issue. Possibly on some cars before that, let us know in the comments if you've got an older Tesla that supports the new boombox feature. 
This new tool lets you change the sound of the car's horn to a bunch of weird stuff, and it lets you play music or sound effects from the external speaker as the car is driving along. The new horn sounds obviously include a fart noise because Elon Musk continues to have the sense of humor of a 14 year old, but there are some other really cool sounds like a goat screaming, a posh British dude, well, I never. an old timey horn sound, even Homer Simpson's dream of a car horn that plays La Cucaracha is in there. It's a lot of fun to play around with. Just keep in mind that the fake horn sounds only work when the car is sitting still. In real driving situations, you default back to the normal horn sound, obviously. Imagine an emergency situation is happening and your car is just making fart sounds. <laughs> The driving sound effects is something that was sort of implemented to help pedestrians to hear the car coming since Teslas are so quiet when cruising around at low speeds. Again, there are some pretty silly options for this feature. You can play ice cream truck music, snake jazz, rock and roll, or even the horse trotting coconut sounds from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You can also program these sound effects or music to play during summon mode so the car will have a soundtrack as it autonomously returns to you from its parking spot. All this stuff is really cool and fun to have in the cars, but this new release is still version 10. Where is Tesla software version 11 and what is still to come with that update? Well, it's a safe bet that the reason for the delay is related to the full self-driving feature. There has been more talk around this function recently as the beta release with auto steer on city streets has been out for a limited number of testers. And Elon has notified us that full self-driving will be coming with the option for a subscription service. The last point is huge for the average Tesla owner who does not have the means to spend an extra 10,000 US dollars on the autopilot upgrade at the time they purchase their vehicle. Expect Elon to be pushing hard on Tesla owners to adopt full self-driving over the next year, as Musk expects to have level five fully autonomous capabilities with no driver interventions finished this year, 2021. And Elon has predicted that we are only 10 years away from having 70 to 80% of vehicles on the road with autonomous capabilities. The full implementation of the expanded auto steer with the more detailed street view on the main screen will probably be the core of the version 11 software update that will only be available for owners with the full self-driving option installed. But with this subscription model coming in, presumably you could purchase one month of full self-driving to give it a try, see if you like it and decide if it's worthwhile to continue paying for. That would give way more Tesla owners the opportunity to at least experience what their cars are capable of. And with the software now being able to steer the car autonomously in pretty much any driving situation, I think most people are going to be very impressed with this update. Some other features that Tesla owners have been hoping to see for a while now and were not included in the Christmas update would be the ability to add waypoints in the navigation mode. That one is pretty simple. Instead of telling the car you're going from point A to point B, you could add in a stop or two along the way. There's also bird's eye view, which is a feature that a lot of cars with 360 degree cameras are using now that lets you see the car and its environment from a top down perspective. It's really nice for navigating in tight spaces. One more feature that is pretty common on other cars with side view cameras and painfully lacking on Tesla is an automatic blind spot view when the turn signal is activated. Obviously Tesla has let you view the side cameras for a while now and they pop up with the rear view camera, but a really nice feature to have is when you activate the turn signal, the screen automatically brings up the relevant side view camera for you to check. It just makes the user interface of the car feel very slick and it would be great to have it coming soon to Tesla software. How about a Tesla app store? This one almost certainly is coming, but probably a bit further down the road than anything we've talked about so far. 
As we reach a higher and higher volume of Tesla cars on the road, the viability for Tesla opening up their software to allow developers to make downloadable apps for the cars increases as well. So far, every media player available on the Tesla infotainment has been written by Tesla developers who are basically copying Netflix or Spotify and porting it over to the Tesla system themselves. This has resulted in some kind of rough implementations where these services look pretty similar to what they see on your phone or computer, but they lack a lot of functionality in the Tesla. Allowing developers like Spotify to create their own app for the Tesla system and then making it available in an app store would fix that disconnect. And you would be able to have the exact same Spotify experience from your computer to your phone to your car. And this could obviously present some problems for managing compatibility issues with older Teslas. And we still need the user base of Tesla owners to grow even more to make this venture worthwhile. Elon has been talking about early 2021 as the time frame for both the full self-driving complete release and the launch of the subscription option. So that gives us the feeling that the software version 11 update is not far off at all. If everything continues to go smooth-ish or as smooth as it can go considering the current state of the world, we're probably going to see this major update dropping around the beginning of February. It is very exciting times to be a test Tesla owner and a Tesla stock owner, that's for sure. If you've been having fun with the new update, be sure to let us know what your favorite part is in the comment section down below. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. What new features are you hoping to see coming when version 11 drops in the near future? If you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.